Um, aloha, if you are tuning in, um, welcome to week, I don't know, eight or seven of Heart Centered Service. So today we're talking about um, feeling stuck and pivoting in your business. So um, Francesca um, had the idea of talking about our own personal pivots. And so what we would love for you to do is join in. Um, if you're feeling stuck right now, come let us know, drop in the comments, like, the raising your hand emoji or um, yeah, like we wanna know like where you're feeling stuck or like um, what part of the decision-making process you're in. Like for example, I think Fran and I were actually going through pivots in our business right now, which we'll talk about, but um, we also want to hear about where you're feeling stuck because even some small decisions like what kind of investment to make um, can be like a really big decision that you spend a lot of time on, so yeah. Yeah, um, and one of my favorite things about the most recent episode we recorded, which is an interview with Sheila Joy, it's linked in the description here if you want to check it out. Um, we talked about how you're constantly evolving as a person, so your business should be evolving with you, um, and it's something that's really stigmatized by um, like our culture, by society. Um, but it's it's such a natural part of being a person like our we we had this we've had this idea that careers are so linear um but your career should be just as dynamic as your life or as you are as a person um so i love that we got to have this conversation on the podcast because we are in a community this community the heart-centered service community the people who listen to our podcast you are people that are driven to build meaningful careers for yourself and who are constantly learning and changing and growing as people. And that's amazing. So we want to make sure that um, we are giving you the tools and advice that you deserve to um, let your business evolve with you. So yeah. Totally. Um, and it's really cool to put it in that way because a lot of the time it's, it's like, oh, which path should I take? Um, and you're not really thinking about like, oh, the dis like whatever decision you're making, you're like allowing your business to evolve with you. And we've said before on the podcast, like managing a business is like some of the best type of like self-work because you become the best version of yourself. So um, yeah, this is it. Every decision you make is really an evolutionary process. And so you shouldn't be paralyzed by the, the next step. You should just accept whatever you're going through and then yeah. with it. Let's all embrace change. Oh, and thank you, Gemma, for listening to this live stream, even though you're at work. We really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hello. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, it, in, the, in the spirit of embracing change, um, this is actually kind of a vulnerable topic for me. I don't know about Krista, but Krista and I are going to be talking about the pivots that we're going through right now in our own businesses. So do you want to go first, Krista? Sure. Yeah. So um, I am niching down. Basically, I am um, transitioning and pivoting to really focus on web design. And um, this is kind of a big thing for me. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Just like oh, now, now when I introduce myself to people, I say like I'm a web designer or do web and graphic design. And um, it feels really weird to give myself this title, but um, I am putting a lot of effort into learning about uh, web and graphic design. And yeah, so it's crazy because if you don't know before, I did a lot of virtual assistance and project management. So um, this is really me narrowing down um, the services that I want to offer and showcase to um, the world, basically. Um, so yeah, I'm doing this very, very, very slowly. So I've uh, started by just call, calling myself a web designer and changing my bio on Instagram. So that happened in probably March or April of this year. In June, <laughs> I um, started my portfolio and I put three portfolio samples. Um, and now ne my next step sometime in the future is to um, really outline what, what, um, my package, my design package offers. So um, I'm doing it very, very slowly because I have a lot of projects just um, that I'm working on. But um, yeah, so this is a really exciting pivot for me um, because I feel like I'm finally focusing after two years of um, being in this online space. Cool. 
what was what was the like hardest thing about the pivot and what was a maybe a story that you were telling yourself for like were you giving yourself reasons not to pivot um and how did you overcome those if that is the case totally that's such a good question so i think that um the hardest part for me was feeling like an imposter like just dealing with the imposter syndrome like asking myself questions like well am i a designer what makes what makes a designer um will people think that like i'm a phony if I say if I say this um, and am I good enough to be a website designer basically like all of these questions like about the validation like I I had to deal with a lot of self validation and I had to talk myself up a lot but basically um, yeah so I think that was the hardest part for me was um, getting past the imposter syndrome and talking myself up and really uplifting myself and giving myself this title. I think that's something really important to emphasize. And it's something I tell people who do struggle with this is um, this is us like giving ourselves these titles like and it's OK. And and um, we should feel comfortable doing this because um, the only person who thinks uh, we're phony a lot of times is ourselves. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think imposter syndrome can stop people from pivoting and starting businesses. Like it's such a huge block for entrepreneurs, yeah. but like, look at Chris's portfolio. Like look at the work she has done. She is an incredibly talented designer. Um, like when she designed the website for heart centered service, I like basically like fell out of my chair and like, she is sitting there having trouble, like have like validating herself. And she's sitting there thinking like, Oh, am I good enough? Like, that <laughs> like everybody deals with this kind of stuff so um and like sometimes you need like um friends like Krista and I we have really good friends and we always are like um you know giving each other motivation like we're, we're, what's the word that I'm looking for we're constantly encouraging each other and yeah. um it's good to get that outside validation too um and like ask for it or surround yourself with people who are going to be like, no, like you're freaking good at this. Like go for it. Um, yeah. Cause it is like, if you need somebody to say that to you, like that's, that's human. That's awesome. And you should definitely like ask for that. Yeah. That's another reason why I really like the um, interaction threads that you started last week, because it was cool to see people coming out and talking about what they're working on. Like Matt was, I learned that Matt is working on like a mobile app and he, he works on his like mobile app skill every day. And I think that's really, it's really cool to see like other people, the way that other people are like kind of like working on projects and um, which is like to say like, yeah, if you feel like, oh, maybe this isn't for me, then I think that the, the threads that you started, Fran, are really great at, um, at creating a safe space where people can like talk about what they're working on and how they're feeling and giving that encouraging, um, encouraging feeling that you and I get from um, our circle of friends. And then. Yeah, and those threads will continue. I had a really good time with those last week, like reading the comments and talking to people in them. And this community is a really good place to start with. If you need, um, if you need some moral support <laughs> and you need like, um, the kind of support that comes from people who know what you're going through because they are building online businesses too, because they are being entrepreneurs too. Um, this group is, that's why it's here. That's literally why we have created this group. So feel free to comment on the threads or just post in the group. You, you can totally do that. We're not the only ones allowed to post in this group. So <laughs> Absolutely. So Fran, um, what pivot in your business do you want to talk about today? Um, I guess I'll talk about the one that I'm like currently going through. Um, so th this is this has become like this is like a saga. So um, I'll try to shorten it. You guys know from the first podcast episode that I was originally in digital marketing and I pivoted to business coaching. That was um, I want to say like end of 2018, beginning of 2019. Um, if you want to know about that pivot, you can listen to the first couple episodes of the podcast. I'm not going to rehash that story. Um, so I just recently went through a really big pivot, but, um, since that I have continued to grow and evolve as a person and my interest in spirituality, my interest in astrology and like other mystical, mysterious things has gotten very, very strong to the point where like, I just can't 
not make it a part of my business because it is such a big part of who I am that I want, I really just felt called to pull it into my business because I like to have my, my personal brand. I really value authenticity. I really value showing all of who I really am. And I think that my, the things that I have from spirituality and the tools that I have there are ideal for the kind of work that I do in my business. And just there, it's, it's just where my life is going also. Um, and I had so many blocks to, towards um, introducing that into my online presence and into the way that I work um, work on my business. And the first block was that I'd already gone through a really big pivot. So I was like, I can't do it again because I'm going to look inconsistent. I'm going to look like somebody that's unreliable because like I just pivoted my business. And if I'm adding a whole new dimension to it again, then I'm going to look really bad. And I kept telling myself that story. And then the other... Um, yeah. Then the other really big block was as somebody, you know, in spirituality, um, if you're sharing spiritual beliefs that you hold, um, that's very intimate, first of all. Second of all, I didn't want to appear as somebody who was forcing my beliefs on other people because I would never, ever do that. Like, I respect whatever you choose to believe. Um, and I, I was afraid that if I started putting my stuff on Instagram, people were going to think that I'm like trying to convert people to like astrology or to like the things that I do when in reality I'm just sharing what I know and what I like um yeah so like those things were blocking me and what really pushed me to finally start sharing that part of myself was when I was um in Chiang Mai over the spring I started leading actual moon circles in person with our friends and members of our co-working space and like I could see even people, even if they didn't buy completely into like following the moon or astrology, I could see the magic that I was bringing into people's lives just by sharing that part of myself. And also people kept pointing out to me over and over and over again, like you light up when you talk about this stuff, like you, I've like, I've never seen you this happy and like, you need to follow this. And um, that's just, and I ignored it for a long time. Like I would read people's charts for free. I would like, and people would be like, pursue this. And I'd be like, no, it's just a hobby. Um, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like easing into that now. I've started talking about astrology on Instagram. Um, I started a virtual moon circle so that I can continue to do my moon, um, my like moon rituals, even though I'm not currently in Chiang Mai surrounded by like friends I'm still doing moon rituals and I just this morning I did a 40 minute Instagram live where I like talked about the astrology for the week and that was a lot of fun um and I'm and like this is I I'm kind of glad that I get to share this now because like I'm not totally sure how this is going to fit into my business but I know that if I keep following it I'm going to end up figuring it out um and I'm going to end up with a business that is more aligned with me um so yeah I'm excited about how that's going to develop that's what's that's what's happening with me right now <laughs> yeah and I want to add that as an outsider I yeah I definitely saw that and I was surprised that it took you so long to start integrating it into your business because you're so passionate about astrology and not not only are you passionate but you're super knowledgeable about it so um, one thing that I want to share with like anyone who is listening is that um, sometimes your like inner circle and your friends can really see like what stands out about you. And so we've done this practice with one of our friends, Elizabeth, as well as like, I think I talk, I talk about this probably often, but like, we'll ask each other like, oh, what stands out to you about me? Um, because some, sometimes that outside perspective is like, is really valuable in um, showing or in showing you like, or in informing you of like, like what you should pursue or like which direction that you should go. Um, and it's really helpful because our own inner critic stops us in so many ways and like has like all of our inner critic is just like shouting at these things like, no, you can't do this, blah, 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 blah. You're not good enough for this, but your friends can really see like where you shine. And so that's really important, I think, to, to ask um, your inner circle um, what they think or what they think, yeah, shines about you. Such a good point. Yeah, because you're so close to yourself, you know, like um, I, I had all this stuff going on in my head. 
Um, and it took, it took my inner circle saying not just once or twice, like several times of pointing it out um, for me to, to realize that. And I, yeah, again, I'm just, I'm really lucky to have friends like that over time when you become an entrepreneur, like you cultivate this inner circle of friends. Um, yeah. And yeah, <laughs> it, that's the, that's made, made mostly what I'm saying. Like you're, you're way too close to yourself and you have way too much going in your head that sometimes you don't even see what the truth is because you're, you're so stuck in the stories that you're telling yourself. That definitely happened with me. It took me literally like probably six months <laughs> because I was so wrapped up in the stories that I was telling myself. Yeah. And sometimes um, like maybe if you're working from home and you're not surrounded by freelancers or something like that, then go online, like jump in a Facebook group, um, whether it's ours or another Facebook group and try to find like an accountability buddy who is into the same things as you and just hop on, hop on a Skype call, hop on a Zoom call once a week, chat about like what you're working on that week, maybe what you're struggling with. And over time, like you'll develop this connection. This person will get to see like where you're shining and where you're not and be able, you'll be able to really give each other feedback. Um, friend like for this podcast we talk every week and I think it's just like really helpful because then we get to bounce ideas off of each other or just like even if we're not like actively bouncing ideas and we're just staying up to date and like it, it just like it's such a good uh, thing that I think we're consistent about it it helps me out and so yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love our weekly check-ins yeah because we I think before when we were apart last year we wouldn't talk that often so like it was a huge catch-up every time we um, talked to each other and I remember being really drained because I was like you know in Ohio I was working on my computer and then like and then I would talk to like you and Liz and then I would be like ooh, like I'd be excited again um, cause you, cause I get back into that world. Um, so yeah, if, if you're listening and you're like, oh, I want that, um, maybe find a mastermind to join. Um, even like working with the coach, I'm not trying, I know I am a coach, but like, it doesn't have to be me like work with a coach. Cause they are, um, trained to see those pieces of you, of you that like, um, that like where you're supposed to be headed, where you're holding yourself back coaches know how to um, see that stuff um but yeah and then or just like getting your friends together and creating a mastermind and meeting with them regularly um because when you're like talking to your mastermind talking to a coach not only are you like piecing together what's going on in your head like it's it's helpful for you just to talk but then also you have somebody who's watching you progress through this journey that can um, offer you like constructive insight yeah, definitely. Um, I was in a mastermind during the first like year and a half of business or something of freelancing. And it was really, it was really helpful to just like l look forward to the calls at once every two weeks and just talk about like, yeah, where I am or like where I'm struggling and have people to like give an update with so yeah I think finding a mastermind whether you're like creating one yourself or um jo like joining into like a group program or something like that just having that consistent check-in is really important uh which is really interesting because in this week's podcast episode with Sheila um she talks about also checking in with yourself and that stands out a lot to me because um we can get so busy and if you're listening I know like you put a lot on your plate you are an overachiever um you are filled with ideas and like love to say yes to everything <laughs> and so yeah we put a lot on our plate and then um just having such a full plate we forget to check in with ourselves because our hands is our hands are so full and so um so in the episode with Sheila, in our interview with Sheila, she talked about like, yeah, remembering to spot in time where you're checking in with yourself and then um, having a mastermind or an accountability buddy um, will also give you that opportunity to check in. And so these things like might seem unnecessary because you're like, oh, but I have to do all the things and like, I don't have time to jump on a call. Like, no, it's really important to, to intentionally slot this time to do this check in and like yeah 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 you should definitely definitely prioritize that kind of stuff I know that it's it's easy if you haven't been really deep into like journaling or personal development work like to be like oh that's frivolous like I'm gonna do that after I finish all this stuff no like I I do that stuff first thing in the morning because it sets the tone for my whole day um and being in the habit of checking in with yourself is so 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 important especially if you're building your own business because um 
entrepreneurship isn't just about chasing dollars, not just about like the bottom line. It's if it was just about money, then you would you would get a job, right? Um, you're you're an entrepreneur because you have a vision, and you have and your vision is going to evolve and grow and change with you as as you know yes. you go through your career. So it's so important. This is a priority. Yeah. Um, oh, and it's really interesting too, because like, we think that when we make a decision, like we have to stick with it. Like I was like, okay, I'm doing virtual assistant, So I have to stick with it or, okay, I'm doing this one blog. So I have to stick with it. But actually um, being in this industry for a couple of years now, like I, I've seen people like pivot a lot. And so sometimes that's like, it's like, it can be like a waste of time depending on how you're spending your time because like, oh, I know I can spend hours redoing my website. So that's why it's really important to me that my website is really minimal at the moment. Um, but like, yeah, so pivoting is so normal. Like everyone does it because everyone is just like trying to find out how they want to grow in this like crazy world. So you're not alone. Like everyone is changing and it's okay to, to not be committed to one thing. Yeah, absolutely. Your vision can change. Like you, you can set, uh, I had a very specific vision like two years ago when I was first starting my business and it looks nothing like the vision that I have now because yeah. I learned um, and my business changed. And that's, that is so, so normal. Like if, if you yeah. take nothing else from the podcast episode, from this live stream, it's so mm. like, just remember, it's so normal to change. And yeah. It. Yeah. yeah. I, I actually stopped annual planning um, because I realized I was making like these goals and then just like, I would do one quarter and then everything would change the next quarter. So I was spending all of this time at, doing annual planning and like, then my year would turn out differently, you know, like, because as, as I go through the months, I want to do things in a different way or whatever. Um, so I think it's also really good to just focus on short term goals. <laughs> um, for, so for me, and everyone plans differently, um, as you have in one of your episodes for the reckless entrepreneur, but everyone does, everyone plans differently and that's okay. Um, but I realized for me that like, oh, annual planning is like not productive for me. It's a waste of time. So, um, if you're like me and you're, you do this, all, all this annual planning and then don't stick to your plan, like consider just focusing on short term goals. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone does plan differently. And I don't really know a lot of people who benefit from annual planning. Like who, <laughs> who can at the beginning of the year actually predict how the year is going to unfold? Like that's, yeah. <laughs> that's literally impossible. Um, yeah. Quarterly <laughs> planning is awesome. I've obviously, I've embraced, um, I've embraced like a combination between quarterly and monthly planning um, because I follow the lunar cycle. So like I do my 90 day goal that usually stays the same like i i can work towards the same goal for 90 days but i have that built-in check-in process every full and new moon <laughs> and if you don't want to follow the moon then just like um do a monthly check-in process with yourself or something <laughs> yeah yeah oh i think i think um our ceo report would be a good um a good example of this uh, just like we're doing the monthly check-ins basically where we're kind of like looking at numbers and talking about what we want to focus on for the month so um yeah like if you are when you're going about uh you're building your freelance business and structuring your month and just plan in one day where you're doing like admin and ceo tasks um I, I do this for my freelance business as well like i have one day where i'm doing invoicing and reports and um kind of like a, a more admin day rather than anything else yeah. So if you're looking for ideas um, for the CEO report and stuff for, for monthly planning and stuff, my mom is saying hi to you, Krista. <laughs> We're live on Facebook too. Hey. <laughs> no, not hard. That's my <laughs> mom. She knows Krista. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah, but um, <laughs> if you uh, want to go back and watch the CEO report we did a couple weeks back or listen to the, uh, we uploaded the audio onto our podcast, that'll give you a, a good template for a monthly check-in um, that you can use. <laughs> Are you <st> <laughs> You know, it's funny. I actually just um, totally mixed up what was going on because I don't <laughs> want to talk about it right now. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, so. yeah. <laughs> So that's an interesting little <laughs> end to the live stream. <laughs> We're at like 30 minutes now. So <laughs> yeah, so maybe it's about time to call it. Um, so this week we interviewed Sheila Joy and um, we talked about feeling stuck and what to do when you feel stuck because it's a really common, it's something really common that I see because um, we can build up these like really great projects or we have all of these great ideas and it's hard as a multi-passionate to know like where to go next. And so I think Sheila's interview is so helpful because it kind of even like, um, it kind of like punches some of the common beliefs that we hear in the face. And so it's really refreshing perspective on pivoting and making changes in your business and even um, going about business at, as a multi-passionate. So um, yeah, I'm totally am excited for you guys to listen. Yeah, I'm super excited too. It's, it was such a good episode. Um, Sheila's amazing please enjoy it. And yeah, we'll be on here again next week. Um, I'm going to post some more daily prompts in the group because we should keep talking to each other. So <laughs> yeah. Oh, thanks so much for the daily prompts, Fran. No problem. <laughs> Have a good evening, everyone. Aloha.